Sifu is a game that will kick your ass into the ground any chance it can get, so it's best to come into the game well equipped with knowledge to turn the tide of battle in your favor. The game has been out for a couple of days now, and players have discovered that this stylish action brawler has a ton of bite to it, and is easily one of the most challenging games in recent memory. <laughs> I've poured a dozen hours into the game so far, having completed it once and have comprised a list of essential yet simple skills needed to excel at the vast majority of the game. Let's get right into it. First things first, don't neglect the power attack. In many other games, the power attack is usually something you string together at the end of a combo. And although you can do that here in Sifu, I have found that I almost always use the power attack as my primary attack. Here's why. Power attacks still hit quite fast, and they deal more damage than the normal attacks. Better yet, they tend to knock back enemies a bit and rapidly fill up the enemy's structure meter. Once the structure meter is full, an enemy will go into a stunned state, allowing you to finish them off with a takedown, initiate a throw, or simply continue laying the smack down. Remember, you have your very own structure meter as well, so it's best you make sure it doesn't max out, as you'll be left vulnerable and open to a barrage of attacks. Next up is the dodge. By dodging, your character can quickly move out of harm's way, and since there is no stamina attribute, dodge away to your heart's content. Sometimes spamming the dodge button can be a viable strategy if you need to get away in a pinch. Just know that some enemy attacks may outpace your dodge, so try to block if they get too close. Also, by holding down the dodge button, you can sprint, which is also a worthwhile tactic if you want to run away and take a breather. Sometimes when enemies gang up on you, running away to get more space is the best strategy here. Before we move on, you can cancel out of a normal and power attack at any time by hitting the dodge button in the middle of an animation. No need to wait around for the animation to finish here, just dodge. Blocking is invaluable, and once you get this down, the game really starts to click with you. By holding down the block button, your character can completely block most attacks. Some attacks that you cannot block are the power strikes, as shown when an enemy's attack glows red, and enemies wielding sharp weapons like knives and swords. By blocking a blockable enemy attack at the right moment just before an enemy strikes, you are able to parry an enemy, temporarily stunning them and leaving them open to attacks. Or you can initiate a throw. More on throws later. Although parries are really great for building up an enemy's structure gauge, I recommend the directional blocking above everything else. In addition to standard blocking by holding the block button, you can also have your character quickly do a ducking block to duck out of strikes that would otherwise hit your upper extremities, or do an upper dodge by swiftly jumping up in the air over attacks that would otherwise hit your feet and run the risk of making you trip and fall over. To initiate the ducking block, simply hold down the block button and flick your left analog stick downward, or simply down on the PC to get in a quick duck. Or flick up while holding the block button to do a swift jump in the air. Because 90% of the attacks in the game are aimed at your torso and face, the downward blocking is the most useful tool in your arsenal to dodge all manner of punches, kicks, and thrusts. Trust me when I say this but this is perhaps the most OP move in the game and can quickly trivialize many enemy encounters and boss fights once you get the timing down. Because it's a block and you are also ducking, even if your timing is off, you will still be able to block the attack. Careful studying of enemy patterns and movements is key to excelling in this game, and this downward block will help you speed up your way to mastery. In addition, Doing this upper and lower blocking at the moment just before an enemy strikes will slow that enemy down into a slow-mo-like effect, giving you clear windows of opportunity to send them to Jesus. Let's talk about weapons. Weapons are incredibly strong, and if you wield any weapons other than a bottle or a flask, that weapon can take a beating and last quite a long while. Weapons, whether sharp or blunt, can last a long time, so make sure you use them when you can. Also, throwing weapons can be extremely effective when trying to take down a certain strong enemy, or simply to stun them. Don't forget about that. Also, enemies can get caught up in each other's weapon swings, helping you out. So if you get a baddie with a bat swinging at you and some enemies around, there's a good chance that some of the other enemies will get hit while you nail that perfect ducking block. Let's get into throwing that I mentioned previously. Throwing is a useful and often overlooked mechanic that can be initiated when an enemy is stunned either from a parry or in the animation prompting the takedown. 
by hitting both Square and X on PlayStation, X and A on Xbox, or Control on PC, you can directionally throw an enemy. Doing this in a mob setting is great, as your throw will injure all enemies in that thrown enemy's path. Better yet, if you were to throw an enemy off a ledge, you've got a good chance of outright killing them. Don't overlook the directional throw. Now let's get into Sifu's skills. Throughout each of the game's five levels, you will come across shrines that grant you access to numerous skills by spending XP, which you accrue by taking out enemies and bosses. Here are some skills that will help you out the most. The invert throw is excellent in gank squad encounters. When there is a mob of enemies itching to pummel you, just hit an enemy and dodge into them, allowing you to trade positions with them, giving you more space to plan your next move and potentially bolt out of there and reassess. The charged back fist is amazing. If there is one skill I would recommend keeping forever, it would be this one. Simply hold down the power attack button and let it go when an enemy is right in front of you, and you will deal solid damage and make them dizzy. I use this move all the time on that annoying thug right before the second boss, and it works every single time. Pay attention to what I do here, as I hold the power attack button down and release it just as he comes up to me and allows me to dig into him. This can be used on any enemy in the game, and is highly worth experimenting with. The ground counter is another really helpful move, especially on the second boss fight. Watch me use it here, especially on the second phase when Sean goes apeshit and is hellbent on getting you on the floor seemingly every second. If you fail to dodge out of the way or jump over his sweeping attack, you'll be on the floor. But guess what? That's okay. Just hold down the block button and you'll immediately parry the boss, sending him down to the floor. This can be used on all enemies that send you to the floor, and is a good skill to use to turn the tide of battle to the floor. Okay, that was weird. Let's talk about Focus Regain on Avoid or Parry, a skill you can get while at the shrine by purchasing it with your level score. This will be invaluable, as you will be dodging and downward blocking very often. With each successful dodge, you will accrue focus that will allow you to use your focus attacks. Focus attacks are incredibly useful against strong enemies and bosses. If you continue leveling up this skill, you will refill your focus bar in a few dodges. Now before we end the video, let's go over some of the bosses in the game, namely the first three. If you don't want boss spoilers, now's the chance to click out of the video. But feel free to come back to it later if you're having difficulty with them. If you're still here, you rock. The first boss can be tough for new players, and I admit he killed me a few times, but with the above skills and tips I mentioned thus far, he should be significantly easier to deal with. Just downward block all of his attacks, filling up your focus, focus striking him, and getting hits in. With this boss, you need to be reactive, waiting for the attacks and dodging at the right moments. Also, when you attack, remember to always attack with the power attacks. They get the job done. The second phase doesn't pose much of a threat, just downward dodge and use focus attacks and power attacks in problem solved. Also, while on your way to the boss room, remember to charge the brute enemy in the middle and attack him, giving you an immediate takedown opportunity. This applies to all enemies who are not aware of your presence as well. Because there's no stealth mechanic to Sifu, hitting an enemy unaware will prompt an easy takedown to take advantage of. Sean, the second boss, is the first real hurdle that I had when I played Sifu and you might be stuck on this guy as well. I don't blame you. He hits like a truck and loves to get you on the floor. Using the ground counter skill I mentioned before is great here when in that situation, but here we can really see the benefits of proper utilization of the downward block. All of Sean's attacks, minus the leg sweep used in the second phase, are aimed at your torso and head, so get the timing right and downward block all incoming attacks, hitting him with a string of power attacks afterwards. Study the footage here to get a good grasp of his patterns and try to replicate it. Practice makes perfect, but there's no better way to demonstrate how OP the downwards block is, like on this fight. Also remember to use your focus attacks on him too. You can even do fancy combos on him by stringing in a focus attack immediately after attacking him on the floor. Finally, the third boss. You want to try to stay close enough to her so that she doesn't use her vertical slices of death move. I still have a hard time dodging this, so if any of you have tips on this, help a brother out and let me know in the comments below. Bringing a weapon into this fight is a good idea too, as you will nullify any damage from her weapon attacks. However, once your weapon breaks, which it will, always try to block if you know it you will get hit, as you will take minimal chip damage. Try to pay attention to this attack on her first phase. 
She will sweep in from your left to your right and will swing a total of six times. Try to stay near her without getting caught in her swings, dodging out of the way every time she swings. Look at the footage here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Get in three quick hits and back off. Keep trying to bait this attack over and over until you down her and proceed to phase two. Phase two can be significantly easier than phase one if you are comfortable with your downward blocks as all of her attacks can be avoided this way. As soon as you see her weapon flash, Downward block immediately, as you will always evade just in time, and punish her immediately afterwards. These attacks are brutal and seem to take out nearly half your health. So once you see the flash, try to initiate the downward block. When she gets up in your face and does the flurry of attacks, the same principle applies. Downward block her strikes. I know I'm sounding like a broken record here, but the downward block is OP, and when used right, will get you through most everything the game throws at you. Some general boss tips before I wrap up this video. Most attacks can be dodged by downward blocking. When you knock a boss down, or an enemy down for that matter, quickly dash toward them and get some hits in while they're on the ground. Otherwise you may miss your opportunity as they get back on their feet quite fast. In general, practice makes perfect. Every tip I've given you here is meant to be practice, as repetition is the mother of all skill. And once you've refined your skills with the tips I've discussed in this video, you'll be the most badass kung fu master the game has ever seen. Let me know what you think of the tips and information here in the comments below. I know I missed some things, but I wanted to focus primarily on the combat side of things in this video, as this is the meat and bones of the game. Also, let me know if you want more videos like this on Sifu, as I take into consideration everything you all say in the comments. I'll be dropping a review of the game shortly. If I was able to just help one person, then I did my job here, and I would ideally love to help all of you with this awesome, challenging game. Until next time, keep up the good practice, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video.